Hello, this is Yesterday's News with Joe Vector Race Reporter, and this is Curtis Fairheart here. And tonight, we give you the news, Yesterday's News. And this just in, story from October 9th, 2018. Mr. Vector, I don't mean to interrupt you, but isn't it true that you come in peace? Kinda, sorta. We don't want him in this in this podcast. Room. Never mind. Never mind. It was very unprofessional of me. Go on, please. I didn't mean you to... must be confused <laughs> with Totem Wolf. It could be that I'm confused, but I always like to mention him sooner or later. That's my other. We, that's my other. We try not to talk about. Just do a little job and kiss. You know, kind of try to job it on the side. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, Mister Vector. That was my fault entirely. I apologize for that. Was... We're we're, we're, we're professionals on the three. Which I is why I have to apologize and I have to uh, admit that I, I definitely messed this read. This read is blown wide open. I We should just... Anyway, go on. I, 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 I don't want to know what Total Wolf does on this other show. Mm. He shouldn't even be around this show. No, no. He's bound to recreate something Harry Houdini did and get us all in trouble. <laughs> Then, if anything, I have to answer to Bill and Ed Baxter. That's right. And we all know they're the ones that signed the checks. Or horrifying. It truly is. It could be. The specter yes. of it is frightening me. Yes, yes, yes. This just in. October 9th. That's the news. October 9th, 2018. Animal Sanctuary. Farm team up to save pig from slaughter. Goodness gracious. This is from Harville, Harbor Hill, New Hampshire. Is that the Associated Press? AP News. There you go, kid. An animal sanctuary and farm in New Hampshire are working together to spare a young slaughterhouse bound pig to promote Local agriculture. Well, well, you know, at least they're saving a pig. Yeah, they're saving a pig, but I just want to point out, you know, pork roast, you know, bacon. Now, if you're a vegetarian, then saving the pig is what you want. But they're promoting him for local agriculture. Yes, well, they want to show that agriculture and uh, pigs go uh, hand in hoof. And uh, it's important to remember that. Hand and hoof. Yeah, well, don't don't pigs have, like, cloven hooves or something? You can't say hand and hand. You know, that wouldn't make sense. I guess the hoof's got to be in the right place. All I know is when you go in the morning to get bacon on a sandwich, there's some pig somewhere that's got to pay the dime. And, uh, I feel guilty now because I had a BLT sandwich. Well, that's the point. That's the point. And uh, I, I would feel guilty, but uh, anyway, go on with the story. I don't like eating... I'm glad that Porky's alive. Yes. What yes, is his yes, name yes, anyway? Yes, is his yes. name is his name really Por- Porky, Mister Vector? Is that your professional opinion? I'm gonna get a lot of hitters for this one. Maybe, but uh, um, we'll, we'll deal with them as they come. I, I feel I feel sorry. I I eat out of respect. We'll burn that bridge as we come to it. Yes. <laughs> Beans and greens. Farm of Guilford is hoping. To send the pig named Grover to cute and cuddly Grover, kids. No bacon for you. Grover lives. <laughs> it's insane, really. I mean, yes, we're celebrating life. We're also celebrating no bacon. And if you want to think about it, it's horrible. It really is. <laughs> to the the Tom Ten Farm and Sanctuary in. Harbor Hill, where it will live out its days. Grover described as the runtiest of runts has touched the lives of people (coughs) who know him via the farm stands, petting zoo, the Caledonian record reported. Sanctuary founder Jennifer Vickery, if I said her name right, said 
Grover was to have become a farm to table. See, it's nothing but professionalism here, folks. Just remember that. Now, he was a runt of a runt of a runt, which meant they felt, well, he's teeny tiny. We're not going to get a lot of bacon out of him. He's better used as a mascot. And I, knowing about mascots, agree. I think it's wise that they did what they did. It makes me feel bad for eating a BLT. No, it was a perfect, perfect accident, you know. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything that you should lose any sleep over. It's just that pig got life, so it's really a beautiful thing if you want to think about it. He was better. He was. The day of execution. The story continues. She said they, they're fundraising to expand the sanctuary's pig area to accommodate Grover and future pig rescues. Sanctuary pig area? Who's naming these things, anyway? Vickery said it's imperative that small New England farms work together to promote consumer awareness, animal welfare, and secure the agricultural way of life the region has enjoyed for generations. The time, and this is a quote from Victor. Victory. Not victory. Victory. Well, it's victory for the pig. Yes, indeed. The time to act is now. And in case of Grover, that action will not only save his life, but could make an impact that goes beyond one animal, two businesses, and a few people blazing a trail. Vickery said, We have no doubt that Grover is an ambassador for meat pigs everywhere, and are hopeful that his pardon will stimulate thought, and conversation among men. She's hopeful that collaboration with the Guilford Farm stand will stimulate thought and conversation between other sanctuaries and farms. Riveting. It's amazing. I'm glad the piggy's alive. Now, that being said, pork roll is still on the table, boys. I'm sorry. You know. And we're from New Jersey. Yeah, well, I could have said Taylor Ham, uh, the endless debate. Now, I could have said anything. Pork is good for lots of stuff. And uh, I say pork roll, egg and cheese, breakfast sandwich. Yeah, you can tell we're Jerseyites, or whatever you want to call us. Because, uh, yeah. So anyway, what's next on the news tonight? It's a busy news cycle, and, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll be enhanced by whatever is next. Well, let me just see. News, oh news, where, oh where is there news? I think I found a story. There you go. All right, kids, buckle up. Here is another pick story. Give a hoop. Read a book. I think this is why we eat pork roll, egg, and cheese, or DLT. Because not every pig gets to stay in execution. That's See, where one was pardoned, just like the Thanksgiving turkey, the other, as we have in repeated episodes, causes trouble for the pedestrian. You know, like at the White House, when they pardon the turkey, the official pardon of the turkey. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I was, this just, is, I was always wondering about this that. Is, this, this is the story, Curtis Fairhart. Lay it on me, Joe Vector, Doctor of Journalism. Doctor. Emmy, Emmy nominated, uh, Pulitzer nominated. Uh, if there was an Emmy, I never received it. No, but you were nominated. I was nominated, I think. I don't know. I don't 
I'm not sure. Maybe we're making grandiose claims. I think I think I think that was something Totem Wolf put in. You know, you're probably right about that because I, I do now remember that it was actually him that told me all of that. Maybe, so yes. Maybe maybe he slipped through a portal and he. Um, I'm going to continue to say it, regardless of... Uh, maybe he slipped through a portal where there was a Joe Vector on another uh, plane, and he said... You know, if I didn't know any better, doctor. if I didn't know any better, I would think I was on another podcast, Spiritus Holographica, the way we're talking about portals and other things happening. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. was that was that shameless? No, I don't think it was. Well, we're back to the story. Let's uh, continue on with the news read. Very important. I lost my news story. Of course you did. Okay. I oh, of course find you my did. News story. All right, good. Because if I read mine, mine is very sullen, and it's gonna bring us all down. So it was all Goose I could find. To <laughs> goosebumps to Dirk Rimrod and his Marius help. Dirk Rimrod here on the first ever asteroid landed by a human being. Oh, wait, we lost him. He's gone. He's definitely gone. Okay, maybe this rogue pig can save us. Oink, oink, honk, honk. Rogue pig goes hog wild in traffic. Another pig story? Could this be possible? Yes, it is. The world is going absolutely cold flaw insane, and we have pig stories. I just don't know what to say anymore. No, no. This world... It's not gone crazy. It has gone pick. It's gone to swine. Yes. This is from October 14, 2018. Augusta, Maine, and this is AP News. It was a classic case of a ham on the lamb. That is right. This writer said it was a classic case of a ham on the lamb. Just like my aunt used to make for Easter Sunday. Sorry, sorry, hold on. Just reminiscing. I remember the days <laughs> of New Year's where I had ham. You remember New Year's? Wow, you're special. I could be 20 centuries ago, I do not know. 20 centuries ago. How old are you? Note to self, Joe Vector may not be human. It could be. Maybe it was 20 years ago. It's always 20 centuries. Okay, well that's a lot easier. Note to self, Joe Vector is probably human. Go on. Go on. We're, we're listening. Police in Maine's capital city are looking for the owner of a 50-pound piglet that wore itself out while dodging traffic Saturday evening after a presumably escaping. After after presumably escaping. After presumably escaping. Yes. Yes, escaping from where? The the Portland, not Portland, as some people say, the, the Portland... Press Herald reports Augusta police went door to door looking for the owner, animal's owner, without any luck. Here we go, another case where the owner fails to do what it needs to do. Good news or bad news? This represents a new segment of the Joe Vector uh, yesterday's news program. The new segment is called Good News or Bad News. Now, here's how it goes, kid. Joe Vexter reads the story to me, and I decide if it's good news or if it's bad news. So, story about a pig getting loose, causing traffic. Uh, What I would say is it's very ridiculous, unnecessary news. Because you're not supposed to let wild pigs run around and ruin people's afternoons. Last time I checked, The other pig got spared, and these people have a perfectly good pig that they're just unleashing on the community, 
and it's running around, and it could get hit, and uh, it could get squished, and they just don't even seem to care. Well, that's slander, but you know what I mean. The other people saved the pig, and these people are just trying to get one killed. And it's bacon to me either way. So, yeah, ridiculous and unnecessary, I would say. Like, take care of your pig, or not, but don't let it run into traffic. I mean, what do you guys, what do you think, uh, Joe Vector? I mean, what if you were driving down the street, and you all of a sudden saw a giant pig in the middle of the road? See, when I think of this scene, I think I'm in Doc Hollywood. Doc Hollywood? What do you mean? See, in the scene, there were people on the street, and I think there was a goat or something like that. And then, in the scene, uh, Doc Hollywood's vehicle went off the road into a picket fence, and it happened to be the judge's picket fence. Mm -hmm. He had to serve his time accordingly by doing Dr. Roy in the movie. I see. And, and as a result... I've never seen it. It was probably because I was watching Masters of the Universe for the 70th time. As a result, he had to do his time when clearly there was a person and a goat in the road. People, please keep your livestock out of the public right away. You know, that's not where uh, moo cows and chickens and goats and piggies belong. So, comparing, comparing to this, pig should not be in the road. It probably doesn't even know where the road is. No, it doesn't have a concept of the road, I don't think. I mean, I don't know. Unless there's some rapid evolutionary changes. You control your livestock, and also, this just in. Goodness. Brace for impact. They say the pig is being cared for by a person familiar with farm animals until the owner can be found. The animal was in good condition other than being tired out from running around. Well, that sure is a good thing. I wouldn't wish any harm upon a pig. That being said, bacon tomorrow. Soon as my eyes open. I mean, so we got anything else on the uh, on the news cannon over there, or anything else we can talk about? Or? Do you have any story for yes. Mr. Hart? Yes, I do, but it's terribly grim. This is Yesterday's News with Joe Vector and Curtis Bearhart on the Joseph Evaldi Network. And now for a commercial break. The commercial break is about me and where I'm coming from. I am Curtis Bearhart, and you may recognize me from some other podcast shows on this network, the Joseph Evaldi brand. Well, we're here to talk right now about a parallel brand called the Okanos Network, a place that kicked me out seemingly for no reason. Uh, there's no bitterness there. Uh, what we'll talk about instead is how my brother Ricky has, uh, you know, he's got a beautiful audio book that he's doing. He's got a spoken word CD and all these channels. And, uh, you know, he, he ghost uh, box thing and... You know, he talks about religiosity. It's uh, pretty, and he's going to start a gaming channel. So that's going to be pretty nice. So check it out. And his books are on Amazon, by the way. Uh, but go to Spreaker.com for the podcast. Now, let me see if I can get this right. Uh, uh, the Okanos Network. Uh, audiobooks, poetry, spoken word, uh, paranormal investigations, and talk. A creative baptism for every day. Take it away, Joe. This is Joe Vector, Ace Reporter, and I am not happy right now. The Thunderbolts are falling from Olympus. Yes, because Joseph Vivaldi, the, the boss that he is, has told me that I have to plug Totemul 
and Bear Hart Show. Well, what's so bad about that? I mean, I'm on that show. It's good that you're on there, Kurt. Well, I know that you and Totem Wolf don't always get along. You don't always see eye to eye about but things. But I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to plug the show for you. So it's mixed. It's a, mi a mixed I, thing. I, I have, I have okay. Mixed, mixed emotions because I was about to yeah. say because you seemed like you were absolutely furious, and I'm like, hey man, can you do me a skinny? Just, uh, I, I, I can throw you a bone. You're you're very good. Well, no, that's very good. 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 Because I enjoy our personal yeah. relationships, and uh, I, mean, I mean, it's just totally. Totem Wolf is just a cancer to my, mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, um, leg area. Well, that's a heck of a cancer to have. Uh, I mean, he's just nagging on you. He wants a bone and everything else. He, he wants to come on this podcast. I'm saying, no, you have your own podcast. I have my own podcast. I'm going to have to go down to Clancy's pool hall and get me a bouncer for this joint because it's the only way we're going to keep him out of here. I mean, I, I don't understand. He keeps showing up. I can see he's upsetting you, so we're going to have to get maybe, some security. Maybe, maybe I should go on his show and invade the Totem Wolf show. In fact, I'm officially inviting you onto the Totem Wolf and Bear Art show since I'm half of that show. So nice. yeah, so if he wonders, guess thank who let him? You, guess you. who let him in the door? Swoosh. Okay, now back back to business. This is I am plugging for the Totem Wolf and Bear Heart Show, and as much as I can't stand Totem Wolf, he has some kind of sense of comedy, and Kurt adds the better sense of humor. Well, that's my opinion. Well, uh, I appreciate that, but that's, of course, uh, depending on uh, one opinion. Oof. I mean, Total Wolf is just out there. He sure is. There's lots of words for how out there he is, but yeah. we can't say a lot of them on this channel. Okay, yeah, exactly. Let's, let's, let's get back to the podcast. So, here we are, back on our newsread, and what does the AP say? Oh, we'll talk about that stuff all okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, do, oh. do, 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 do. Ooh, doop, 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 doop. That might be copyright infringement. Yeah, it could be. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, we're we're professional. We're as professional as a guest. Yes. Uh. Apparently, the rogue pig found his way home. This is just more to the story. This is a new. News article. You know, if we had titles, we would call this the Three Little Pigs. Because this is just on. I can't believe it's a, this is another pig story about yes. another pig. Yes, yes, yes. Holy mackerel. I never imagined. Yes. All right. Well, let's get this over with. This just in. From October 15, 2018. Nacho Cheese or Cool Ranch Doritos or Rogue Pig Back Home Highland, California Oh, maybe this is another pig I, don't know. I guess they're all the same No, I think it's other pigs I mean, this is about Doritos now Deputies in California have used Doritos to lure a pig the size of a mini horse back home. The pig was running around the neighborhood when... Uh, here we go. Another pig running around the neighborhood. This is just... I mean... I can't even understand what I'm hearing here. Uh, running around the neighborhood when... The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office received the call Saturday. One of the deputies had Doritos in her lunch bag. Here we, here we go. Uh, a pig running around town and stealing somebody's food. Well, I don't know. 
Well, I don't know. She lured him, so what it more or less was, he was a pain in the neck, and they have to get smart on him. I, I guess it's a good thing. He needed to. Well, he, he, what he needed was a good talking to, because he shouldn't be running around. Whoever's keeping him, we shouldn't have to use a uh, snack to get the pig out of the street, buddy. Let's let's get our priorities straight here, you know? One of the deputies had Doritos in her lunch bag. Video shows the deputy leaving a trail of the chips, which the pig followed. Just like Hansel and Grell. It's amazing how that works. Deputies had responded to previous calls about the pig and know where to take it. He was returned to his pen and deputies secured the gate. Oh, I tell you, that pig made out like a bandit. I mean, he gets free Doritos. I ain't so bad. So, what is it, good or bad? I say it's, um, I say it's good for the pig, it's good for Doritos. I think he found his way home. I think that the Frito Lay Company might have paid the reporter to write the story. Because it's basically like a Dorito commercial without paying for it. I mean, uh, I mean, the pig got lured with Doritos? Yeah, of course. You could probably get me out of the street if you give me Doritos, too. It's just a little suspicious there. I mean, we have a lot more important issues to talk about than pigs. The three pig stories. So, what does that mean, exactly? Let's look through the lens of something even more convoluted than what we're already thinking. Well, this story... Do we have a story that's not about a pig today? Um, actually, no. Wait, there's a fourth pig story? That's it. I'm retired. It's over. You know... Mathematically, that's just not possible. Um, this is what we call, in this, in this, uh, because we're about to wrap up this podcast. Well, that's one way of putting it. We've given you enough. You should be satisfied. That's this, three pig stories. This, this, this podcast has gone to swine, so yes. basically we're going to... Uh, Turn it to a real pig sty in here. <laughs> basically, we're, after I try to get my uh, laptop to be working, it, it works. Nothing but professional here. Grab the flight I, stick. I think it's understanding the story as well. We are going to do historic yesterday's news. A new segment with Joe Vester. Wow, that was our special effects team. Very good special. Yeah, I guess. If you're like four. The name of the article is from list Verse.com. It's 10 weird stories about pigs from history. But we will read number one. Is this really about pigs? Yes, it is. See, this is just... I don't even know what to say. And this is by Ben Gazer, February 9th, 2018. The old geezer. And we're going to read... Well, number one, whatever it is. Mm. And it's Cole. Number one on his list in weird stories from pigs in history is War Pigs. War Pigs? You mean the Black Sabbath song? I do not know. Uh, said this. Elephants were one of the most Terrifying weapons of the ancient world. Their ability to break tight ranks of armies made them a potent tool in war. Pilony the Elder wrote about elephants crushing men in their army. It might be Ptolemy, but I'm not sure. I don't know how it's pronounced and trampling whole companies of men. He also recorded another fact about elephants. The 
very least sound, however, of the grunting of the hawk terrifies them. Other sources recall how this weakness was used in battles. So if you march pigs in front of elephants, they don't get along? I guess not. Wow, there's something new. See? Educational on this show. When the Macedonian army was besieging Megara, the inhabitants needed a way to break their ranks. Taking pigs and smearing them with oil, the Nagarians, Nigerians set fire to the terrified animals and release them into the enemy camp. What an uplifting story of hope and change for the future. So they lit the pigs on fire and they let them scatter through the camp spreading chaos. So one pig got saved, one pig got snacks. See, one of them got mercy, the other one's got lit on fire. See, it's a great cycle in this universe. The shrieking pigs caused the enemy elephants to go wild and kill soldiers on their own side. Hence chaos. The fate of the poor pigs is not recorded. They were lit on fire. I think we can assume that their fate was not pleasant. They weren't even barbecue. This this podcast just went to hell. I, <laughs> I've heard of fast food, but this is ridiculous. This is Yesterday's News with Joe Vector and... Curtis Fairheart. Curtis Fairheart. That's right. And let's do plugs. So, <clears throat> here's, the, um, here's the long plug. Um, the Okanuf Network is from where I come, and I'm here to say that the Okanuf Network features the creative talents of Richard Andrew Okus, a friend of my brother's. And uh, uh, the Okanuf Network's got great shows. It's got audiobooks, poetry spoken word, paranormal investigations, and talk. A creative baptism for every day. Check it out on Spreaker.com. And furthermore, the writings of Richard Olkis can be found on Amazon and uh, it may be uh, other places soon. So, he has poetry books, which uh, they are pretty wild. And he's about to churn out his first uh, novel called Malifloria. Volume 1. And uh, that's some real, real wild stuff in that book. So check it out, kids. Uh, put hair on your chest. It's good for you. And now, back to Joe Vector. I am an ace reporter. Yes, and a doctor of journalism. And the winner of, uh, well, he was nominated for I, something. I am the winner of uh, Henry Hill Ford... Nyack, Williams, Knickknack, Paris, Paddywhack, Plumba, a Plumbus, a Plumbus mm-hmm. Award. He is the sole winner of that award, and there's never been one since, so it's really special and rarefied. Did you just say soul? Oh no, what have I done? We are going to invite on this show because the name has been invoked. Here it comes. Joseph Evaldi. Hello, Joseph Evaldi. Welcome. Sit here at this desk. Hi, I am uh, Joseph Evaldi of the Joseph Evaldi brand, and I couldn't help but over here you talk about a soul warrior's journey. That's essentially what happened. What is the Soul Warrior's Journey, Joseph E. Baldi? A Soul Warrior's Journey is a book featuring Joseph Woods. He bumps into an acupuncturist named Nadius. 
and Matthias. Or Matthias, as it was. Or, or Matthias. Yes, yes, yes. 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 And I wasn't going to uh, try to finish your sentence there, but you know. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be interrupted, please. I, I, I need to be corrupted. I mean, after all, you are the one that uh, you know brings us our hamburgers, so uh, you you deserve to speak. Hamburgers. That's a good idea. Yeah, man. White Castle. Think about it. Changes the whole name of the game. Would the toilet be backing up? <laughs> it's conceivable. I mean, that's. I can't confirm or deny your assertion. Oh, okay, let, 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 let's get to business. Well, right back to your right back to your uh, uh, plug there, uh, sir. Okay, okay. I didn't mean to introduce the uh, um, back to plumbing to this uh, adventure, but here are the last. Well, it could happen in the Soul Warrior's journey. You never know. Oh wow, that book's got a lot to offer. Well, not in that book. It could be in another of the Soul Warrior continuum. Well, I, heard, I once heard Ricky Fairhart say that you're one of those fellows that's got a lot of irons in the fire, so you probably got a lot of books coming out. Well, you know, it's... Let, let's just say something about the Soul Warrior journey. He goes on the journey, he uh, goes through the dreams, and he finds himself in another world, in another land, and... He has to go on a journey there, too, to find a soul, and then he runs in to an arch nemesis along the way called Darius. And Darius is an evil man. Well, that's what it is. Good, evil, protagonist, antagonist. Yes. Yes. A very good tale, and he, I am going to come out with an audio book for that book, November, December. Godspeed, Mr. Evaldi. And I shall get off this podcast. I'm glad to be a part of the podcast. I'll tell you, you and Joe Vester are doing an excellent job. Well, I feel that we're not uh, messing up too badly. I mean... It was a lot of piggy uh, stories in the news today, and uh, I can't say that that was on purpose. No, no, I mean... And I do mean that. I mean, it's the most random thing I've ever seen in my life. I, 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 hear, I hear good things about uh, Joe Baxter and Kurt, and i tell you, I even hear good things about the Totem Wolf and... The Bear Heart Show. I'm sure you hear some good things about it. I mean, uh, it's a thing I'm fairly satisfied in. And, uh, well, anyway, uh, it's uh, about time to call it. See, let me, let me get Joe back on the show. Let me get Joe back on the show. You know what? Close it first. Excellent. See you later, buddy. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Was that the boss? Yep, it was. He came in here real quick and, uh... All I gotta say is I might be fired for doing this, but what is the boss doing on our show? Well, he is the boss. He can pretty much do whatever he wants. Oh, you know. I told you, he's the one that makes the cheeseburgers fall out of the sky, so... Well, all I know is... He I has tremendous him. power. I, tremendous! I, 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 saw, I, I saw him, uh, just stare in the sky when, uh... He was looking at cheeseburger. I mean, it reminds me of something my brother Bill Vexter would do. Bill Vexter. Hmm. We'll have to have him on this show at some point. Yeah, you know, he's like, he's a weird guy. I mean, he's just, he's just talking about hamburgers all the time and everything else. I think he's been hanging out with Tottenham. This just in, Dirk Rimrod slain by an astrological cheeseburger that fell out of the sky. Oh, no. Oh, man, what gruesome news. At least it wasn't a bacon cheeseburger, so another pig got to draw a breath again today. I think on that note, we'll wrap it up. (laughs) Probably for the best. See you later, people. Thanks for listening. Yesterday's news with Joe Vector Ace Reporter and Curtis Fairheart. Have a good night. 
強いですよ。